Voluntary omnivores obviously overuse various metaphors. 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 It's about as fast as I can say it, right? But I'm listening carefully to myself to make sure I'm not making any mistakes. A tongue twister. You probably know Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, a peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, how many pickled peppers did Peter Piper pick? We all know that one, right? That's the classic Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers tongue twister. Number one, are tongue twisters a good way to improve your pronunciation? And which ones should you practice? Well, there are plenty out there. You can just Google tongue twisters. But I think it can be worthwhile to make your own, right? To think about the sounds that are tough for you and then try to make tongue twisters, challenge yourself to make tongue twisters that will push you to practice the sounds that are difficult. So that answers the first question, which is, yes, they can be very useful. Tongue twisters are useful in helping you build the muscle memory that you need to make sounds correctly as a habit. It's the biggest, one of the biggest problems with pronunciation is I have to think about how to say that word. You shouldn't have to think about how to say something correctly. It should be automatic. Okay, well, how do I make it automatic? Repetition, practice. And one way to do that would be tongue twisters. Tongue twisters, things that are difficult to say, usually short, and usually emphasizing one or two specific sounds, okay? So I made a couple of my own and I want to share with you how I did that and then talk a little bit about how you can do it and then we'll actually do a bit of practice here with our tongue twisters, okay? So here's my first example. Now what I thought was, okay, let's imagine that I need to make the V sound clearly. Let's say I struggle with the V sound and maybe I want to throw in some some S's that I struggle with. Maybe I want to um, uh, use the, the voiced S sound that's a Z sound a few times and really push myself to do those quickly, okay? So you make a tongue twister like this. You all you do is make a single sentence. Just keep it short, keep it sweet. And it doesn't have to be a beautiful sentence. It doesn't have to make perfect sense. But I would recommend making it not just random words, right? If it's just random words, I think it's not going to be very memorable. I don't think it's the best way to practice. My recommendation would be to make a sentence that's at least grammatically correct, to not worry too much about what it really means, or that it, it's a sentence that makes a lot of sense. A sentence that makes a lot of sense, a sentence that makes a lot of sense. There's a tongue twister. But at least grammatically consistent, right? So that's what I did here. I, I found some words. Uh, I've got here, I've got, uh, uh, let me get my, so I've got one V, two Vs, three Vs, four Vs, five Vs, and then I've got some S's as Zs. I've got metaphors, overuse, omnivores, right? I've got a couple of S's here too, but that's not my main focus. Okay, so I know what I'm trying to practice. If you make the words in advance and then build the sentence, it might be a little difficult, but you can try that. What I like to do is just sort of start writing and eventually I can figure out how to make a sentence. It might be a little more challenging for you if you want to start with the words and try to piece them together. It's okay, uh, but everyone has their own way of doing it. The key thing, though, is just to find those words that are tough to say that have those sounds, right? And you also want to make it challenging to say all at once, maybe because the sounds are close together or because there are many of them or because they sound similar to other things, right? And you want to start slow, so that's the key, start, start slow, 
and then increase speed. If you say it fast the first time and it's wrong, then you're not really working on your habits, right? You start slow, just like learning the piano, and you gradually increase in speed over time. Yeah, that's how you get better at anything, right? Okay, so we start slow. Voluntary omnivores obviously overuse various metaphors. Okay, so I've got some really nice sounds there. Now, what I want to make sure I do is I want to link together the sounds between words that are voiced, voiced, and then obviously overuse, that's linked together, use various, that's linked together, and various metaphors is not, okay, because S is unvoiced, right, this S is unvoiced. So, I'll do the whole thing again, slowly, but now linking the words together. Voluntary omnivores obviously overuse various metaphors. Okay? I want to get it down. I want to make sure it's perfect. You can record yourself if you like. Voluntary omnivores obviously overuse various metaphors. Now I'm going to gradually increase the speed of the sentence making sure that I still say it correctly every time. If I make a mistake, I'll go back. Voluntary omnivores obviously overuse various metaphors. 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 It's about as fast as I can say it, right? But I'm listening carefully to myself to make sure I'm not making any mistakes. And don't give yourself a break. If you say something wrong, go back. Because the whole point is you're training your muscle memory, right? So build your own. Make them into sentences. Don't worry about the meaning. Don't worry too much about the meaning, right? Focus on the sounds. Include the words that have the sounds. Then gradually increase in speed slowly, more quickly, more quickly, more quickly until you go as fast as you can without making a mistake. All right, great. So that's fairly straightforward. I've made two others just for fun, and I think it would be fun to just quickly go through those. I'm not quite sure why my my eraser is so tiny. <laughs> I have a comically small a comically small eraser at this point, but uh, I'll, I'll eventually get there. Okay, here we go. So now let's let's go to the next example. Now the next one you can see emphasizes the th sound so i'm emphasizing th here unvoiced th here voiced or if i want i can pronounce this as c l o s e in fact c l o t h e s and c l o s e we usually pronounce those in the same way okay and then closet closet okay so that's going to be a z sound was that's going to be a z sound close that's going to be a z sound and also Martha's is a Z sound. So I'm working on the Z and I'm working on the TH sound as well. Other voiced sound, right? Then TH voiced sound, Heather TH voiced sound, brother TH voiced sound, and then Arthur is an unvoiced sound. Okay, so I wanna throw in an unvoiced one to make sure that I know how to do both close together. Now sometimes there are words that allow you to practice these things that are difficult. I, I'm here mostly practicing the voiced TH and the voiced S, the Z sound and the Z sound, but I'm throwing in a few other things too. There are some words, for example, if you struggle with this S-O-M-E-T-H-I-N-G, saying that by itself can be a tongue twister. Something, 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 something. It's difficult for a lot of people. Okay, so now we start slowly and increase speed. Martha's clothes closet was closed by none other than Heather's brother, Arthur. Martha's clothes closet was closed by none other than Heather's brother, Arthur. Now, I'm, I'm really liking this flowing sound here, none other than. That was not on purpose when I made it, but I'm just realizing now, none other than, none other, that's got a nice little cadence to it. So I'm gonna try to maintain that as I increase speed. 
Martha's clothes closet was closed by none other than Heather's brother Arthur. Martha's clothes closet was closed by none other than Hearth. Martha's clothes closet was closed by none other than Heather's brother Arthur. Martha's clothes closet was closed by none other than Heather's brother Arthur. Wow, that's a tough one. None other than none other than none other than. <laughs> that's a fun one. Closed by none other none other than none other than. <laughs> None other than Heather's brother, Arthur. I like that. Now, notice also I'm linking together the sounds so that it flows very nicely. If you try to do a tongue twister in a way that's uh, not blended together, you're going, to, well, it's just, it's going to sound uh, unnatural, right? Because if I say Martha's closed closet was closed by none other than Heather's brother, Arthur, each word broken up sounds really bad. Okay, now we'll do one more of these that I have made, and I think you'll see right away what we are trying to practice with this one, okay? This one, a lot of people struggle with the S, the unvoiced S sound, but also having the T close to the S, right? And putting the W in there too. So W, T, and S. W, T, and unvoiced S for, for this one, okay? My Swiss... And also, uh, the other thing I think we're working on here is knowing the pronunciations of words that uh, maybe look different, but actually are pronounced the same. Different spellings. So these are called homophone. My Swiss sweet is suited. Notice same spelling, different sound. My Swiss sweet is suited to... Now there, for especially for tongue twisters, but often in spoken English, instead of saying two, it's what we call a schwa sound. Schwa is a very important sound. It's a vowel sound that we use for unstressed syllables. And we, instead of saying, for example, two, we say ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta. Okay, so my Swiss suite is suited. This is the O, O sound. My Swiss suite is suited to store sweets, suave suits. So we're practicing that s -s sound. A lot of people struggle with that s -s -s at the end. But then the sw sw Swiss sw and sweat, 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 right? And just the S sound by itself. Suave, store, right? This one followed by the T. But practicing that S sound. We've got another sw here and also... This S-U-I-T-E, the first one is pronounced sweet, right? And this one is suit, S-U-I, as in like it fits me, is pronounced suit. It suits you, okay? But when you go to a hotel and you get the really nice room, that is the sweet room, pronounced exactly the same as S-W-E-E-T. Okay, my Swiss sweet. Oh, also notice that I'm linking together sounds that have shared sounds, or rather words that have shared shared sounds. So Swiss sweet, Swiss sweet, notice they share the S. Swiss sweet, that's very key, that's critical. And then sweet suave, sweet suave, sweet suave, right? And do we have any others here? Swiss sweet, sweet suave. Um, no, but we do have a suited to, suited to, so we don't have to say suited, to suited to we put those together we bump them up against each other here we go my swiss uh, my swiss suite is suited to store sweets suave suits and swanky sweat swat that's uh, my brain wants to say sweat swocks sweat socks <laughs> i'll try that word up my oh, man i made a hard one for myself uh okay my Swiss sweet is suited to store sweets. <sighs> My Swiss, sorry, I'm going to slow down a little bit. Okay, here we go. My Swiss sweet is suited to store sweets, suave suits, and swanky sweat socks. Okay, there we go. My Swiss suite is suited to store sweet, suave suits, and swanky sweat socks. My Swiss sweet is suited to store sweet, suave suits, and swanky sweat socks. My Swiss suite is suited to store sweet, suave suits, and swanky sweat socks. Wow, very difficult. That is a tough one. So, find what sounds are tough for you. Build your own tongue twisters. You can look for them, of course, but I think the ones you build yourself are going to be most unique to you, right? Make it one sentence. Make them pretty short. Start slowly, and then slowly increase the speed. Make sure you're working on your muscle memory. That is one tool you have 
to help you get to pronouncing things clearly without having to think about it. Making pronunciation a habit via muscle memory.